I talk today I want to talk about um, a less known um, Iranian woman filmmaker, uh, Mania Akbari. Uh, despite the non-existence of a cohesive uh, women's movement in Iranian cinema, uh, the rise of women filmmakers, especially in recent decades, um, has provided a venue for the discussion of gender and sexuality issues in Iranian society and their representation uh, in Iranian cinema. Um, we have filmmakers such as Rakhshan Mani, Etemo, Tahmin Milani, uh, Mani Jehikmet as the followers, and Mani Akbari, Samira Mahmadba as the young generation of women filmmakers in Iran who have extensively dealt with uh, gender and sexual issues in their films. The question, however, is how much these women uh, have challenged through their films the constructed notion of sexuality um, and femininity whether they have tried to define the legitimate demands of women within an Islamic framework, such as motherhood, sisterhood, heterosexuality, marriage, or they have tried to break away from these predefined um, notions. So as Anit Kuhan says, uh, the existence of more <coughs> filmmakers doesn't in itself guarantee more feminist film. And by feminist film, in the context of Iranian cinema, I mean an explicit subversion of femininity, womanhood, defined to a male-dominated um, Islamic point of view. Um, an effort to question the constructed gender identities and an effort to represent the woman as an independent individual rather than through her relation um, to the man and the family. So by this definition of why feminist cinematic approach, I think the only woman filmmaker, and I dare to say the only woman filmmaker who really stands out in Iranian cinema um, is Mania Akbari because uh, as I'm explaining, uh, she has extensively not only did with gender and sexuality, uh, but also she has transgressed the boundaries of predefined notions in Iranian uh, cinema as well as uh, Iranian society. After the Islamic Revolution of 1979, as part of a general Islamization of the society, Iranian cinema went under heavy Islamic purification. And as the result of it, we have the Islamic codes of modesty imposed upon Iranian cinema. Uh, as you are seeing, these codes um, impose the imposition of the veil on women in all scenes, the prohibition of uh, close-ups of a woman's face, the prohibition of shot reverse shot in male-female conversational scenes, and the prohibition of any cinematic technique evoking direct sexual look of a man and a woman towards each other. So in recent decades, the filmmakers, especially women filmmakers, have tried to sort of break away uh, from these codes and um, represent a new portrayal of Iranian women on the screen. Um, Akbari, however, not only breaks away from this cause, but also has transgressed um, really the boundaries of gender segregation in Iranian cinema. I have divided her cinematic style and team into three different um, section. So the first one is uh, blurring the boundaries of reality and fiction, documentary and drama. In fact, Mania Akbari's film um, are a combination of her cultural concerns such as gender inequalities, women's rights, restricted female body, her personal life, her breast cancer, her divorce, her cinematic and artistic career, and her sexuality. This mixture creates concepts that are extensible to a broader socio-cultural perspective and provides an insight into the gender and sexual issues in Iranian society as well as the sexual politics of the state. Uh, so she has transgressed uh, these boundaries, really predefined boundaries of gender and sexuality through her teams, really bold teams such as uh, homosexuality, virginity, a female identity sexual crisis, but she has also used both <laughs> cinematic styles. If you um, notice, I mentioned that the close-ups of a woman's face uh, were prohibited, and she insistently uses only close-ups and long take shots to um, represent a woman in her films. So 
I want to provide you with a general insight into her film. So, Twenty Fingers is her first uh, feature film. Uh, consists of seven episodes, played by Ajbari herself as a as a woman and Vijan Donishman as a man. Um, they play different couples, uh, the role of different couples in each episode. And the episode, each episode is shot entirely in close-ups and each episode is a long take shot. Uh, for example, there is a scene in which um, Bijan, who is the representative of a more traditional point of view, complains about Manio's heterosociality with other men, especially unrelated men. And uh, she becomes really frustrated and says, if you are really worried about my uh, heterosociality, I should tell you that um, actually I'm more comfortable with having relationship with my own female friend. And not, not only I'm more comfortable, but also I had a sexual relationship with my own friend, Maria. So in that conversation, she not only uh, challenges the segregated boundaries of gender in Iranian society, but also provides a subverted representation of it. So if you are really obsessed with keeping the words of women and men separate, now we have homosexual uh, activities in each ward. Um, she continues to challenge these teams, um, but in 2007 she was diagnosed with breast cancer and she uses her experience of battling with breast cancer uh, to represent um, a really subverted woman who had femininity. In this film, 10 plus 4 is a, a sequel to Abbas Kiarostam is 10, and it is starts uh, with um, Monia in a car with her son, and uh, both of them have shaved hair. So Monia's son tells her that, Mom, we look like the same, but obviously, the shaved hair of Monia is the result of cancer and chemotherapy and is different from that of a normal haircut. Um, so by doing that, um, Akbari sort of emphasizes on the lack of her breast and her as a subversion of an ideal woman in Iranian society. And also this film, the main point of it, this film is to challenge the perception of an ideal woman uh, based on able bodiness and invalidate the idea that, that a, if a woman doesn't need that outward physical beauty, she lacks her essential femininity. She continues uh, working with uh, her uh, experience of breast cancer and challenging um, the gender boundaries in this film, which is, to me, when I first saw it, it was pretty shocking that these films are coming out of Iran. Uh, in this film, in my country, men have breasts. Um, she again uses her experience of battling with cancer. She uh, accompanies the images of her own naked body with a nostalgic Iran Iraq uh, war song. And by doing that, she creates a symbolic <coughs> connection between war as a cancer and the scar it bears um, on the society, and the cancer, the scar it bears on the body. Also, by doing that, she sort of um, challenges the idea of men as fighters. Because in Iran, Iraq war, those pro governmental propaganda uh, mainly focused on representing men as fighters, those who are at the forefront of the war, and those who are exposed to heavy physical and emotional uh, injuries. And by doing that, she challenges the idea and represents her herself as a fighter because she's battling um, with her breast cancer. In her next film, One to One, um, the film centers um, on uh, love, love triangles and lots of heterosexual relationships involving a really beautiful girl, Ava. So Ava's face is disfigured due to acid attack by her ex-lover. And I read this acid attack in two ways. First, that in a society, as I mentioned, is highly obsessed with uh, keeping <coughs> the words of men and women separate. The female beauty is uh, communicated through social relations. As well as this attack shows how much Iranian men um, assume control over female body. And just because he cannot have her as um, his 
um, girlfriend or his fiance, he allows himself to destroy Allah's beauty. And um, as Fatima Muqaddam says, female sexuality is treated as a regulated commodity in Islam. As such, an integral part of a woman is subject to say a woman is not the full owner of her own self. But what Ava does in this film is that she really denies the demands of these women. She tries to find confidence and um, beauty within herself rather than to getting compliments from other men and rather than focusing on her physical appearance. So in all of this film, the main um, cinematic style that Akbar uses is close-ups and long take shots. And um, the close-ups and long take shots in Akbar's film um, sort of break the distances and segregations between individuals, not only and not only bring the characters closer to each other, but also bring the characters closer to us. The main our uh, um, goal behind those Islamic codes of modesty was that um, make the female body distance. And by breaking those um, codes, Akbari brings the Iranian female body closer to us. And um, also by bringing the Iranian woman closer and by representing her on the screen in various subverted ways, such as Restless and hairless due to cancer, disfigured due to acid attack, and punished due to illegitimate sexual affairs, Akbari denies the Iranian women's confinement within a patriarchal context, breaks the Islamic codes of modesty in Iranian cinema, and challenges gender segregation and unequal gender laws in Iranian society. And I do recommend checking her films because uh, she is pretty amazing, and I'm hoping that um, I develop this um, paper for the which I'm working on, and I'm hoping that I contact with her in person, and I can sort of bring her to the U.S. because she is a very, very courageous and brave um, woman that her work should be recognized. And thank you so much.